Hey everybody, it's Noon here. I'm about to start a game of EU4 with the Anbanar mod. Um, this is a cool mod. It's a full flavor fantasy mod um, in a sort of Tolkien-esque world. I'm going to start a new game as the Command, who I've literally never played before. Um, let's go Iron Man mode. What the heck? I mean, I'm doing a doing a campaign for YouTube. I'm actually not sure uh, how long of a series this is going to be. It's more of a test run. I'm just sort of testing out the recording and the audio and how it all goes. Uh, so we will see. Uh, let us get going. I'll probably just uh, cut here until the end of the loading screen. Okay, so here we are as the great command of the command. Um, these are one of the uh, most powerful nations in the game. Uh, and uh, as I said, I've never played it before. So um, we'll see how we go. Uh, hopefully it should be, um, you know, pretty, uh, possible to get a, uh, a successful game going. Oops, sorry, just making sure that music is up. Uh, let me know in the comments, uh, how the audio mix is. Uh, I'm pretty bad at that stuff, but anyway, let's hear we go. The war room is in agreement. The great campaign shall now commence. Grand Marshal Moguan Wolfborn on the conclusion of the Kinu Ike held 1430. The hobgoblins of North Rahan, which is, uh, this continent, traditionally led simple lives, organized into loose semi-dynastic tribes. Harvesting serpent bloom from the caves, hunting and raising livestock on the surface, the average hobgoblin grew up with a bow in one hand, a hunting dagger in the other, and a keen sense of how many paces there were between them and the next landmark. In times past, these bands were frequently at war with each other, and would only unite under powerful mage shamans, felt to be representatives of the hobgoblin gods. It's a fun phrase, hobgoblin gods. It was under their guidance that the Hobgoblins made war against the Dwarves, resulting in the fall of the Jade Empire and the present Goblin domination of the Eastern Serpent Spine, which is this uh, mountain range here that goes sort of all through the middle of the map. This dynamic changed, however, in the wake of the God Loss, the event known elsewhere as the Day of Ashen Skies. I assume there's some uh, well-known Anbanah lore about that that I do not know about. As I say, I'm pretty new to this uh, mod. Which many Hobgoblins alternatively took as a sign... Uh, sorry, alternately took as a sign of either punishment or abandonment by the gods. This theological rift became permanent with the invasion of Harimar the Great, whose armies threw, goblin, threw hobgoblin society into further chaos. Those who believed the gods were angry and required de greater dedication flew up the gods' wall to the plateau of Nomsulan, where they maintained the shaman-led society of the eagle hobgoblins. The rest retreated into the caves, where they were reformed into systems of intertribal loyalty called commands. Rejecting the shamanism of their peers, and with the influence from newly arisen high philosophy faith of Rahen, they instead created the godlust philosophy, which holds the gods to be dead, hobgoblin cultural values of family and obedience to be paramount, and mages to be subversive elements in societies that threaten to overturn those same values. That's good to know. So magic is kind of a big deal in this uh, in this mod, and I guess it's not going to be for the command. Which might make it a good sort of intro nation, I'm really not sure about that. Um, but the, it means that we won't have to worry too much about, you know, using magic effectively. That was then, this is now. The hobgoblins of North Rahan have united for the first time in history, not under the personal power of a mage, but under a larger political system. The Confederation of Commands, signed in blood in 1392, binds the boar, wolf, and lion commands together under a single leader known as the Grand Marshal. Consensus between the oft-warring tribes is achieved through an institution known as the Kenu Ike, or Settlement of Swords, less literally translated as the War Room. Although recent, the system of government has seen its first victories, under the rule of Grand Marshal Moguan Wolfborn, the Great Command sees the opportunity provided by the withering alliance of the heroic realms to conquer vast swathes of Shamakad. To the south, the decadent second Harimaj slips further into its slow decline. To the west, the remaining ruined kingdoms scramble furiously to muster what strength they have left into an army capable of holding back the hobgoblin threat. To the east, the Oni of Demon Hills brood and the warrior monks of the Xia find themselves in a panic, believing that our blood, slung, blood song slaves' recent resettlement to their borders signals a coming assault. <laughs> they are not mistaken. The army of the Great Command is at this present the strongest in all of Hales, uh, which I believe is this larger continent, perhaps even all of Halan. I don't know what that is. It is a sharpened sword, every part of it honed to a keening edge. Whichever direction it is pointed in shall bleed. And it is the sole choice of the Grand Marshal, at the consensus of the Kenu Ike, in which direction this blade shall cut. Winning, however, is only the first step. Governing comes next. 
The hobgoblin people must reform out of their tribal roots and become a society of blood and iron, one capable of claiming all of Hales and holding it within their ironclad grip. Okay, so big military guys. God Lost Faith gives us plus two tolerance of heathens and minus ten AE impact, which is very useful. No special mechanics, all right. Government, it's a monarchy, good, good. Environment, uh, I don't know if we have tributaries or what, so we shall see. Uh, I'm just going to leave this all as is. I could probably enable or disable regions or the Great Conquerors situation. I don't really know what the deal with that is, so I I'm just going to leave it for now. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have suggestions about how I should do that in the future. Okay, the Great Command. The humans feared, creatures in the dark, angry, uh, angry spirits in the night. And when they looked to the looming, looming serpent spine, they feared an unending tide of savage monsters, the stuff of exiled dwarves' tales. The hobgoblin tribes who lived in the foothills were a pest and a nuisance, but merely that. They feared the wrong thing. That is obvious as Grand Marshal Moguan surveys the armies assembled before him in Saralavan. Off to one side lay the Ninyu Kikun, the Grand Marshal's elite. On the other, the slave state rabble of the Zanyu Kikunin. Standing before him, straight and salute, the Wolf Marshal, the Lion Marshal, the Boar Marshal, their armies behind them. He holds their eyes for a second, then two, then three, before his gaze moves on, drawn to the massive banners of looted silk, each Marshal's subordinate generals accompanied by a stand bearer. Beyond that, bodies seem to blur together, but the Grand Marshal knows what he would see, know the strict organization that governs every body in this vast plain. The Nosunin, led by the infantry's Lieutenant General, consisting of eight regiments per army, Four banners per regiment, eight bands per banner, and three teams per band. Ten soldiers in a team, all of whom hope one day to rise and command one of those groupings themselves. On the flanks, the Gikunin cavalry. Three warg riding tribes, the elites of their command, and given the massive wolves to train and ride. Some say the warg lieutenants and uh, uh, crested riders who serve as subordinates here are nigh bestial themselves, but such voices are few and far between. Their charges tend not to leave survivors. This is the Hobgoblin army. This is the great command. This is what Halas, Halan, will soon learn to fear. Beat the drums of war. Okay. Gain 20% army professionalism and hint. Before changing your estate setup, check the starting privileges. Okay, that is a good tip. Alright. We start off with a bunch of professionalism. That's very nice. So this is this. This is the command. Uh, we do have slave states. I don't really know what slave states are. Uh... Slave state. I guess maybe it's a, a tributary, given the uh, the context there. All right. Um, okay, so we can pick a deity. We have very low uh, religious unity. Let's have a look at these estate privileges. Wolf command increases the chance of their agendas being brought up in the war room. Required over fifty loyalty for the declaring war. Okay, and we gain legitimacy for. Increasing base tax or building a farm estate or a court haste of town hall. Okay, and we can never revoke it. Same deal. Okay, so it reduces our legitimacy. All right, so um, we need to develop to gain legitimacy. That's good to know. Same deal, but uh, for deving. Uh, no, not actually for deving here. Getting a general. All right. Okay, so these three uh, commands are kind of our warrior sections, I guess. They do have quite a lot of land. Um, seems like we've got a lot of the same old kind of uh, privileges. Okay, and there's different rulers. I see, I see. Um doesn't look like we've got any special mechanics about that. I don't know how the uh, ruler's situ- Okay, so here's a wolf hobgoblin. So I guess our uh, heirs will like choose somehow which one they uh, are with. Okay, we are three in all of our techs. That's good to know. Let's look at our missions. All right, interesting layout for the missions. I'm gonna have to do a lot of scrolling for this. Uh, wow, that's a big mission tree. All right, so the war room. Dealt with the aftermath of our recent ruined kingdom conquests. Okay, I guess we'll get some uh, uh, events for that. We have all advisors, and we meet with the war room. Okay. Interesting. Okay, I don't know how these uh, uh, campaigns are going to work, but I guess when we meet with the war room, uh, we'll get to like declare for some uh, some way. 
Um, okay. Imports. Uh, Ajakuma's opinion is 150 and we're allied with them. Okay. Ajakuma. All right. They don't hate us. That's a, that's a good start. Serpent Bloom. All right. So we just need admin power, diplo power, and money. We need a loyal thing and a quartermaster. All loyalty. All right. That's quite nice for the morale. Black Step is a slave state and Stolen Gem is a slave state. Where are they? There's Black Step. I think Stolen Gem might be uh, in the mountains somewhere. That's them. Yeah, okay. Calm down, sir. All right. Aftermath of our recent ruined kingdom conquests. Gets free stab. That's nice. Okay. So we basically just need to have a bunch of slave states. Um, they do take up Diplo relations, so I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work, but uh, I guess we'll find out. I'm probably going to make a bunch of mistakes uh, early in this game, so I'm not sure how long this campaign's actually going to go for, because, um, you know, uh, there's all of this, like, flavor stuff that uh, it's going to be hard for me to know in advance how it works, but that's okay. All right, completed Zhao Dao campaign, need barracks. Siege down a capital using artillery. Total dev, 1,000. All right. Tight command. Okay, great insubordination. I guess that's an, uh, a disaster or something that's going to happen later. Okay, cool. Do we have claims? We do not have claims. All right. Wait, stolen gem is a slave state. I thought that was... Uh... Oh, and they have high opinion. All right, all right, all right. So we just need to, like, improve with these guys. Can we marry them? Okay, in incompatible biology. That's a that's a fun addition uh, in uh, in Anbenar that doesn't come up in uh, regular EU. Okay, so who are our rivals? These guys. The Raj. Dinijan Raj. Okay. Who have a bunch of uh, tributaries. Okay. And Jean Lucy, same. All right, I guess I'll just do that. They're my only options, and uh, I believe I will just go straight ahead and um, issue embargo because I like that uh, power projection. Okay, how are we doing money-wise? Okay, we're actually making quite a bit. We do have some corruption going on, which is not ideal. We have a gold province somewhere. Okay. Oh, client states have one. All right. Um, in terms of estates, we really need high loyalty from them. There's a lot of reduced legitimacy stuff going on, um, which is kind of an issue. Oh, that's interesting. The military thinking doesn't cost loyalty. Okay, great. Well, I'm definitely going to take... Uh, admin and military. Probably not the Diplo one, because we need that crown land. Uh, okay, alright. We've also got a uh, stratocracy. Alright, I wish I'd checked that first. That's annoying. Um, but it's pretty good. Alright. Um, I think I... W <sighs> okay, that's pretty annoying uh, that I've just lost all that crown land. I'm going to go ahead and seize land straight away. Um... Okay, so we can get cheap advisors as well, which is quite nice. It does reduce our legitimacy, which is currently growing. Um, Alright, that one... Okay, okay, so that one gives us just loyalty straight up. Alright, well, let's give him that one... Uh, That's a general... Okay, dev cost is pretty nice. And unrest. Let's give him that. Again, I'm, I'm kind of just uh, muddling my way through here. Um, reinforced speed is not exactly what we're looking for. And who are these guys? Okay, so these are our human uh, uh, like slaves or whatever. 
or subjects. Okay, so they're kind of our merchants. All right. Um, Diplo relations and desire. That's great. Okay, missionary strength. All right, I think I'll just leave it there for the moment. How are we going? 62, 59, 54. All right, maybe we'll give Lion Command something as well. Um, the mill advisor cost is pretty good, uh, but it doesn't give them loyalty. Could just give them Lion Advisors. I don't need it actually any higher than this. Um, I'll leave it for now. I'll leave it for now. Okay, so we're actually losing a bunch of money now because of that, which is irritating. Let's have a look at our deities. Okay. Oh, that yearly legitimacy is great. I'll probably take that one, even though it's kind of low quality. We will use that uh, manpower a bunch as well. Um, I mean, all of these are pretty good. Uh, morale and corruption is nice. That's going to save us a bunch of money. Um, how often can we change this? doesn't say. Hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of worried about this legitimacy situation. I'm not sure I'm going to have the power to, uh, the, the mana points to, um, dev regularly, so I'm just going to take that one. Okay. Uh. Alright, interesting. Uh, okay, so these must be, um, I think these are the things that we need to uh, deal with. What is it? Deal with the fallout from our conquests or whatever. Reinforce speed. Diplo rep's probably pretty good. What's our Diplo rep currently? Zero. All right. Um, stab modifier. Improve relations. It's kind of quite close between those, because we're going to need to do a bunch of improving relations, but it's also the advisor I kind of least want to hire. I can't afford all three. Let's do it. Uh, what's our land force like? All right. Um, let's just take the reinforce speed. doesn't super matter. Let's take improve relations and step cost, sure, whatever. So we need 100 diplo power. 150. Okay, all right. So I guess it's not that. I'm just gonna turn those off. Start demonsterization. We will want to be doing that, I believe. I'm not sure if like the missions want us to be monsterized or demonsterized. I haven't really played with that mechanic very much in the previous campaigns that I've uh, I've done. So we'll see. Um. All right. Don't really know about the temple restoration, but we'll get there when we get there. Okie dokie. So, <laughs> I guess we're just trying to deal with the aftermath of our recent Ruined Kingdom conquests, which I do not know how to do. So, let's start off by trying to uh, improve our relations with these guys. Turn up the speed a little. And uh, I think I'll also... Okay, that's our, uh, that's our leader. Okay. The Jade of Gronstunad. Before the Green Tide, before Castanor, before Aldwarov, there were the Jade Dwarves. The mightiest among them bore a great jewel of jade, intricately crafted and immaculate... Oop, why isn't it pausing? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, when the assembly... Con uh, they have a jade jewel, okay. When the assembly convened for the first time, this gem was handed over to be added to the Dwarvrakron, the crown of the dwarves, signifying that the High King's writ extended all the way to Rahen and Yanshen. When Alderov fell, the Jade Dwarves built an empire in the east, and it was only after much struggle that we brought them down. The Jade of Gronstunad, along with Gronstunad itself, is now in our hands. It symbolizes our victory over the decadent dwarves. Let us serve as a reminder. Alderov collapsed once, and should it be necessary, we shall destroy it again, for we have forged a mighty empire for ourselves on the surface. Okay, cool. So, um, we get the Jade Gem. Gives us 2.5 uh, global trade power and some prestige. That's great. Okay, uh, there's also this whole mechanic with um, minorities of different races, uh, which is interesting and, and kind of tricky to use well, uh, especially because I think it kind of plays out differently in different nations, but uh, that's fine. Okay, the offer of the Horned Ogres. The Horned Ogres of Azja, uh, Azjakuma, better known as the term, by the term Oni, 
have come to us with an interesting proposition, formalizing the long-standing Karashi trade that is vital to keeping our mages under control. Now that we're the dominant force in Northern Rahan, they fear, and not incorrectly, of our eventual invasion. The only will increase shipments of Karashi, I don't know what Karashi is, to Sarilavan Saril, uh, in exchange for a truce, assuring them that we will not invade the demon hills they call home. <laughs> it is up to the Grand Marshal Moguan if this deal with the devil is in the combined command's, combined command's best interest. Although the Horned Ogres cannot be trusted, there are far more mages along the Raheni than we have ever had to deal with before, and securing our Karashi supply is more critical than ever. Okay. Do we have something here about Karashi? No. Okay, interesting. Uh, sure. Let's go for it. We, we have a mission to be uh, on good terms with Ajakuma, so let's do it. Let's immediately start improving here as well. Okay, Mercs, no one cares. Start drilling here. Um, and we also need to be on good terms with uh, Black Step and Stolen Gem. So let's start with them. Let's start with Black Step, I guess. Alrighty. Oh, it's super annoying that it has turned off. I must have turned off pause when uh, events turn up, but all right. Okay, uh, Hobgoblin minority. All right, Hobgoblins are primary. Uh, I th we can't really increase their tolerance. I don't think there's much point in that, so we'll just let them do as they... Oop. Pardon me. Do as they please. We can get a few more troops... Let's, uh, let's just get a couple more. And we will drill here as well. Whispers from the Rivers. It's been 13 years since the Grand Invasion of Shamakad began, and the armies of the Three Commands swept aside the squabbling lords of the Upper Yanhi. It's been seven years since the great victory at Anakan... Anakadakara brought the last army standing against the Kikunan and the undisputed rule uh, of the great command over the north of Rahan was solidified. It's been five years since the Grand Marshal Mogiwan Wolfborn declared total victory over the squabbling princedoms of Gatasak and Sarilavan and Sir, and the clans of Lion and Boar and Wolf supplanted them. But of these sub subjugated kingdoms, who should well be quelled and know their place in the new order? Insolent Sir resists. Not directly, not foolishly do they rise against us, and yet there are whispers of dissidence. Rumors reach the ears of the Garunananananan administrators who govern the humbled city. Something is happening. A wind of resistance blowing across our rightfully won lands, con uh, contacting the disaffected. Like a cancer, this message spreads, metastasizes, and like a cancer, we must root it out with extreme prejudice. Okay, that's fine. I... Hmm. I wonder if I should give them all the uh, special commissions. We are still making um, uh, legitimacy, and it'll be useful to have the ability to uh, make them all happier. And it pumps up their baseline pretty high, which is nice. Drill in. Cool. Okay, Zhang Lucy insulted us. I can't believe they would do that. Um, yeah, we don't have any claims, and I don't really know what we should be doing. It, I mean, it feels like we should be declaring war, but I'm pretty sure we're just literally not able to. Yeah, because, uh... Oh, we just need their loyalty higher. All right, so maybe I shouldn't have seized... Oh, well, as I said, going to be making some mistakes uh, early in this game, so we'll we'll see what's what. Um, we do have reasonable missionary strength. Um, it's not too expensive. I went high unity improvement. Okay, but most of those can't be done. Forty months. Let's do uh, let's do this one. The slate pets. That'll be fine. And uh, can we reduce autonomy anywhere? It'd be nice to just get some more money. Okay, we literally can't do it. Okay, uh, we can do it in a couple. Let's do it. I'm not too worried about rebels at this stage. And, um, it's nice to get this all done ASAP. 
I should have checked how much money we're making before we do this, just because it's nice to see. Um, oh no, there's going to be a million separatists. What are we going to do with our uh, biggest army in the world, huh? What are we going to do? Okay, well, that didn't seem to make any difference, actually. That's uh, kind of unfortunate. Oh, well, no, it doubled our, it doubled our overall income. Um, yeah, whatever. There's going to be a bunch of rebels. We'll, uh, we'll deal with that when it comes. Um, okay, so we can eat the Jay's, Jade Mine's tension. The rivalry between Stolen Gem and Black Step uh, tribes have gotten out of hand. While the division has made them easy to control, it leads to regular violent outbursts between the two tribes, which then need a violent response from our forces. Okay. I'm actually going to do this straight away, uh, because we can only do it every five years, and I want to be able to use it regularly. Okay, so we change Jade Mine's tension by two, uh, which reduces our liberty desire. Sure. It does put us behind on Diplotech, but uh, that's fine. Is there anything we really want to do here? Not, not heaps. Oh yeah, uh, what's going on with our traders? We have no one here, that's weird. We do have someone here collecting. I guess this is not a, an end node, so that kind of makes sense. And we've got someone here transferring. Hmm. Actually, I actually think I want to collect here instead. Uh, do I? No, I probably want to trans... Oh, I can't transfer because it's our home node. That's pretty irritating. Um, weird. That's a weird arrangement. Um... Got fourteen percent here. Yeah, no, let's let's collect. Um, guy in Jado, see how that changes our income. Might just send him straight back again, because it will reduce the amount of money that we collect in Jade Mines. Okay, yeah, that has reduced our income. Assuming that was that what that did it. All right, go back to doing that. Okay, dark clouds gather. The ill wind blows, and reports of our spies confirm the truth we have suspected. Something's going on in Sir. Where is Sir? I should check that. <laughs> okay, here. Okay, good. Smugglers have been moving people and supplies in and out of the city. Envoys and messengers carrying information from far and near. Whatever rebellion is brewing is seeking allies, and they've sent their messages to the four corners of the world in search of aid. We've moved carefully to avoid arousing too much suspicion, but have succeeded in capturing several of these messages and teasing information from them. What we've learned is concerning. The underground resistance in Sir is attempting to form a grand coalition to oppose us, reaching out to every nearby power for assistance. No threat has materialized as of yet, but we uh, and we have time to take actions that will prevent their lobbying from buying them alliances. But doing so may make us appear weak before the Kenu Ike. How shall we proceed? Okay. So we are still making legitimacy at the moment. This is the highest difficulty, not for the faint of heart. All right. Uh, the more enemies we fight and win against, the greater our reward will be. Take some small action. 100 crowns, 15 legitimacy. Okay, okay. Um, let's do the balanced approach. It's only one loan, uh, and 20 legitimacy is all right. Let's do it. I'm, uh, I'm not so confident as all that in, uh, my ability to beat whatever the hell's going on. Do need to be making our money back, though. Okay, they are going to be dying there. That's unfortunate. I guess go back home. Temple restoration. Okay, so it's almost certainly going to make us some good money if we do it. Uh, I think it's worth it. I'm not super worried about going into debt. Uh, let's go. We can't do that one. Uh, yeah, let's do it in our, our uh, capital, Sir Levan. Could potentially take decades, all right? This is actually going to reduce our total income, which is a bit annoying. It's fine. And uh, I think I'm going to turn down my mill maintenance, because I do just need to be making money. I'll wait until, like, uh, one of these... Um, Rebellions are getting up to like 70% and then I'll uh, I'll pump them back up again Okay, is there anything we can do with these guys to make this go faster? I don't think so I've 
Go down and improve relations guy. Maybe I'll get rid of this. Uh, whatever. We're making five a month. That's fine. We just need to pay back this loan eventually. I am irritated with myself for uh, doing this crown land thing. Um, but not a huge amount I can do about it. I mean, I guess I could save scum, but where's the fun in that? Okay, how much do we need with Black Step and uh, the other one? 150. All right. We do have this uh, military focus, which I'm not sure is actually that important for us at this stage. I could turn it off and balance it, but uh, I guess I'll leave it on for now. There's no reason not to. All right. Again, I, I kind of have the sense that we should be doing something. All right, we're at 80% there. Okay. Come down here. Come up here. Doesn't super matter. Just hopefully we'll be defending the uh, the assault. Okay, production efficiency reduction is a pretty unfortunate start, but Kessler by. Okay. Hey, pause. Emergency meeting of the Kenu Ike. In the dark of night, the marshals gather in the war room. Where normally there would be ceremony, formal greetings, and speeches to mark such a thing, today there is only hush and consternation. There can no longer be any doubt. The rule of the command will be challenged, and soon. Okay. The loyalty's fine. All right. The three marshals pace the room, deep in thought. Decisions must be made. Our enemies will stand against... Oh, 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 right. The, from outside. Okay. Uh, but who and where is yet to be decided, and the actions of our agents in the coming weeks will make the difference in War and Peace. So it will certainly rise, but we can yet prevent some of their allies from coming to their aid with well-placed assassinations, fortifications, and threats. Okay. So the Demon Hills, I believe, is over here. Yeah, and we just made a truce with them, which is going to be going for another three years. Um... Jean Li is here. There's a bunch of little guys. Uh, these guys are, have a bunch of um, a bunch of helpers, and Sirlevan and Gatusk. So that'll be our domestic uh, loyalty. Um, let's go Jean Le and Ruin Kingdoms. I don't know which are the Ruin Kingdoms. Oh well. Um, I, I guess it's probably those Rajas. Uh, let's do that one. Okay, it's now Sir's turn to move. Let's rock and roll, guys. Bring it the fuck on. I wonder if I should delete this fort. It's a bit gamey, but if they're going to rebel and actually, like, leave... I think I will. I can always build it up again. Um, like, yeah, I don't want it to be well fortified. Uh... When I have to take it. Actually, let's turn off our forts as well. Still losing money, but that's fine. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Between this episode and the next one, I'm going to turn back on pause for events. Uh, which I will actually stop in just a minute. Prolonged peacetime and changes in the economy have led to many of our salaried soldiers no longer considering the pensions we pay them sufficient. An increasing number of them have turned to other daily work, such as shopkeeping or craftsmanship, to earn a better living. While this can stimulate the local economy, it does mean these troopers are no longer maintaining or practicing with the equipment we have provided them. Okay, so we can lose a bunch of money, or we can lose professionalism for production efficiency and tax modifier. That's awesome. Let's definitely do that one. That cuts our debts hugely, and uh, we're doing fine for professionalism. Actually, I might delete some of my cav, maybe after this uprising. Um, because that's going to be costing us a lot of money, and, uh, I don't think we really need it. Um, we have really good infantry, uh, our wags, are whatever. The storm breaks. Yo, I pressed space by that time. It's a poor general who does not watch the sky. The Earth's forces are as dangerous as a blade, are as dangerous a blade as any in the hand of a foe. And the havoc that can be wrought on the army by rain and wind and snow and sun is not to be underestimated. The elements are a good commander's best friend, and the doom of the unwary. But the seasons of the earth and sea and sky are not the only tempest good commander must watch for. 
The sentiment of the people is also a tempest, a current to read on the rivers and winds, a hazard to gauge in the face of the crowds. And the Grand Marshal has seen the great storm in the north building for some time. In the distance of Sir, that's not really in the north, but okay. The passive resistance of the feckless and false in the hurried messengers flitting like dragonflies across the Karunyaya. Karunyana. But now the word comes in, Sir rises to war. In the north, schemers pounce from back alleys and rally armies to in remote locales and a bid to resist our dominion, joining their forces with the foe. Behind their walls, the men of Sir are bolstered by insidious magic cast by the mysterious shamans of the left-hand path. Boo, mysterious shamans. Hooray, hobgoblin warriors. In the face of such a problem, the command will not flinch. Every soldier will do their part, for this is but another storm, a fleeting thing that breaks upon a people of iron and discipline who have nothing to fear from a little wind. The devastation that sweeps across this land will be endured, and by our force of will, by the tactics and fortitudes of the marshals and the kikunen, we will sculpt the winds of this storm and scatter the dragonflies that presume to oppose us. Okay... Alright, so this releases a few independent states who... Okay, okay, right. Seralavan and Gatask, okay. Or we can play as Sir. Alright, alright, alright. Well, let's not do that. I feel like that's kind of advanced. Tell you what, I will uh, activate my, my forts now. I don't know where these... Um, things are, are specifically going to rise up, but uh, let's give it a go. The bastards in Sir declared upon us. Gatask has joined, and Seraliban has joined. Alright, well, I have annoyingly started out by black flagging my troops. Um, that is irritating. How many enemies are here? I can't see. Doesn't look like miles more than 15k. Um, yeah, pop up here. Okay, 16k. That's fine. That is pretty irritating. I thought I was being clever with that. I wonder if they're going to have rebels now as a result. Okay, we do still have some allies. I'm going to turn the speed down as well. Tell you what, this seems like a good place to uh, to end this episode. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, please uh, hit that like button. Let me know if you enjoyed the episode or if you've got any feedback. For example, the music was inaudible, which I believe may have been the case. Um... And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Bye.